Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. And we're going to talk about Carhartt, and we're going to talk about deferences for products, respect for products, and what is appropriate respect for Carhartt and for Dungeons and Dragons, and what is, um, and why people might choose to stay away from purchasing and using products out of respect. Very unusual kind con- uh, content. Um, let, let's let's get into this. All right. So, um, Carhartt jacket. I'm not sure if you know what it is. So, Carhartt is a company that makes um, all kinds of clothing. But today, we're just going to talk about the Carhartt jacket. Okay. So, um, you've probably seen the Carhartt jacket. All right. It's this rugged, heavy jacket that specific, um, mostly men. I think a few women. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I've seen. I think I can count on one hand the number of women I've ever seen wearing a Carhartt jacket. Um, so it's usually usually men. I'm, I'm sure women wear them, but I don't see them that often. Um, so, and basically, the men who generally wear this product are construction workers. Okay, and and it's designed to like, you know, when they're actually doing work, um, to uh, actually um, like you know like. A good here's a so I know a guy who owns a brown Carhartt jacket, right? It's a brown rugged jacket, right? And um, it's it's really cool. It's a cool jacket, right? Like, and he wears it all the time, and it's got like the battle scars of his work on it, and uh, and he's a roofer. Okay, so he goes up, you know, and and like in the middle of the winter, like he's like fixing roofs, just crazy, right? Like I'm like that's not pleasant work, you know, like. Um, but you know, and I think he does chimney work too, right? So that's one of the reasons why he would be up on a roof in the in the middle of the winter. I think a lot of the roofing's done in the summertime. But he has a Carhartt jacket, right? Now I would I looked at him like, oh, I'd love to get me a Carhartt jacket, right? Like, just get the same jacket, look as just as cool, right? Now mine is gonna have the battle scars for my work because. I don't ever fix anything physically ever. Like, like everything I work on is virtual, right? Like, so, right. And so I was like, boy, I'd love to get me a nice Carhartt jacket. But you know what? I don't. And here's why, right? Carhartt is a product, right? And because they've made an incredibly good product, it means something when you put a Carhartt jacket on, right? When I see somebody with a Carhartt jacket, I'm like, that person can actually change the oil in their car, right? They could change a tire, right? Like, I, I it's impossible. I, liter- I literally cannot change a tire on my car. I, I haven't even tried. I tried it like maybe five, six, seven years ago and hurt myself. And I'm like, that's the last time I'm doing this. Is, I have no business fixing anything physical, right? Now, when it comes to computers, there's very few things I can't fix, right? Like, but when it comes to anything physical, I, I just don't have the skill set for it, right? But when you wear a Carhartt jacket, you're like, I'm in the middle, I'm up on a roof in the middle of the winter, right? You're like, I can change the oil in my car. I could change a tire, right? Like, if, uh, if you know, if your house burns to the ground, I can help rebuild it, right? Like, you know, like, these are real people who have real actual skills to build real things, right? And it is my opinion that if I put on that Carhartt jacket, it is disrespectful to those people who have, um, who have those skills, right? Now, and if I put that Carhartt jacket on, I'm declaring something that's not true about me. It's a lie, right? Like, and so I think, so I have never, I have wanted to own a Carhartt jacket for 15 years and I have never bought, I have the money. I could buy 10 Carhartt jackets today, right? But I don't have I think it would be a lie. If I wear that jacket, it would be a lie. I don't deserve to wear it. The other thing that I think is, this is me, right? Like, okay. And one, I invite correction. If you think my opinion on this is all wrong, but here's another one. All the people I know who make Carhartt jacket, who wear Carhartt jackets, I make more money than them. Right? You want to know why? The reason is found in Fight Club. You make more money sitting down than you do standing up. That is a fact at the macro level, right? I heard that thing in like, you know, like Fight Club's like 20 years old, right? And they were like, you make more money sitting down than you do standing up. That's the way the world works, right? And so 
That Carhartt jacket is one of their payments, right? They get to declare the world, I'm actually useful, right? Like, if the whole world fell apart tomorrow, I could help rebuild it, right? Like, and that Carhartt jacket is a statement of hard, or like, these dudes got scars on their bodies. They have to work in, like, ridiculously cold weather. Like, their labors, like, I sit around drinking coffee and, like, you know, doodling around with, you know, numbers and, you know, and letters and everything's virtual and I have an incredibly comfortable, blessed work situation, right? I, I'm, I don't have to stand 50, I don't have to be on a rooftop and, you know, with, with high winds whipping around me, right? Like, so it's wrong for me to take this badge of honor that they can carry, all right? Now let's start talking about Dungeons and Dragons, right? So you got, so I am, I, I am vexed by the D&D knots and the D&D thens. People who, so D&D now, 5th edition, D&D then, uh, D&D 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E, right? D&D not. TTR, TTFRPG copies of D&D 1E and 2E that are not Dungeons and Dragons, right? Mm -hmm. The D&D thens and the D&D nots, people who play those as their primary game, they frustrate me to no end. And the reason why is I'm like, you guys have 20, 30, 40 years of experience, right? If you go to D&D 5th edition, you can engage with the largest, most engaged, most exciting group of players that exists in all of tabletop. Not, nothing comes close to 5th edition, right? Whatever, you know, D&D then community or D&D not game you have, you don't, you don't even have a fraction of the, the excitement, the numbers, the play, you know, the, the passion that, that, that is around d and 5th edition because it has millions of dollars, it has the best writers in the world, it has the best layout in the world, it has the best art in the world, and your game isn't even close, right? And I would love, you know, I would love if I didn't care about it, but I'm like, you guys have experience that is desperately needed in the d and 5th edition community, right? We need, we can't let you guys literally die, and that's what's happening with a lot of them. They're literally dying, and all their experience and all their value is being dumped into a hole that doesn't matter, right? And I want all that experience mixed with the now, with the game that is engaging with commerce and culture, right? At all, you know, the game that matters, right? And I don't want these older dungeon masters and game masters, I don't want their all the good experience juice, right? How to run a good game to just get dumped in with other players who already believe the same thing they believe and for it to be lost, to just scatter to the ether, right? So so I look at it and I'm like, why are you guys playing these old sad sack games and not doing the work to come over and engage with the with the younger crowd, engage with the excited crowd, engage with the now crowd? And generally the answer is, oh, I don't like the wokeness. Oh, it'd be uncomfortable for me, right? Like, And it drives me crazy because I'm like, because... I think I, I that's what I thought. I thought it was that they just don't want yet yeah, I think it's I thought it was that they didn't want to do the work to change their language and change their ideas and make themselves accessible and acceptable, right, to young people who are actually engaged both with Dungeons and Dragons and with modern culture, right? Which includes woke elements, right? But now I'm starting to think maybe it's a Carhartt issue, right? I won't buy a Carhartt jacket because I have too much respect for those physical laborers who earned that badge of honor. And now I'm thinking maybe that's why D&D then and D&D not don't play D&D 5th edition. Because subconsciously they know they lack courage, right? Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition are courageous players, right? They deal with 47 years of history, right? All in the game that honors Gary Gygax right now, at the same time dealing with every cultural issue of now, not avoiding and seeking comfort, right? The D&D 5th edition players aren't seeking comfort. They have to deal with the, they have to deal with the now of Dungeons and & Dragons and the problems that are coming from Wizards of the Coast. They have to deal with the legacy of Gary, Gary Gygax. They have to marry the two of those together. And they have to deal with every single real issue, right? Like, you know, one of the games that I'm, I'm dealing with right now 
has a campaign border dispute that looks exactly like the Russia Ukraine border dispute, right? And that's being dealt with because the people who play fifth edition care about what's happening now and they're modeling that out in their game to see what does this look like? What would it look like if you had a courageous leader and not a leader who was like, oh, if you invade that country, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to put sanctions on you, which is really an invitation to invade, right? Like, because saying, your cost will be dollars, not a single drop of blood, right? Like, you know, like, and once you state that, like, Russia's like, ooh, nice, thank you very much, right? But what if L'Oreal Silverhand is like, if you move into this space, we will have boots on your ground within your area immediately. What if a leader came from the position of strength? And we explore that within our games because we're on the now, right? We're not pretending it's 1984. So the more I think about it, you know, and just trying to be gracious to the D&D then and the D&D uh, not community, I think maybe they are saying, I can't go into the D&D 5th edition space because I lack the courage of the D&D 5th edition players. They have real desires and abilities to engage with the current culture and answer real cultural questions with the game, right? Because they can play with anybody. They don't have to play with the 60, 70, 50 year old people who are just trying to desperately cling to 1984, right? And that once, you know, and all those Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition players, once they get into that game, right? They have to deal with each other's different opinions. They have to use the right language. They have to, they have to change themselves. They can't just huddle up around their, their friends who are exactly like them. Right. And that the courage that, that is required to play D and D now, Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition, right? The D and D then, and the D and D knots, they're getting comfort. They're not having to change their opinions. They're not having to change their hearts and minds. They're not having to change their language. And they're like, I seek comfort. I seek escapism. There's no expansion here. There's no growth in me or in my table or anyone there. And no one at my table is ever asked to grow in any way. So I know, right, that I am value, a D&D then and a D&D not are saying, I, vo- I value comfort over courage. And so I can't pick up a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition book because I don't deserve it. Because I don't do the hard labor and have the courage of a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. So I think that might be the case. So here's my... I think that is the case. I think that's, a, I think that's the issue. Is D&D then and D&D not people forgo Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition and don't buy it even though they have the money and have the ability because they know their desire to have comfort over their desire to show courage and take discomfort and deal with things they don't like means they don't fundamentally deserve Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition and they have to stay back right I think that's what's happening now I have a question to you should I buy a Carhartt jacket? Am I right? I have never, ever purchased a Carhartt jacket because I think on me, it would be a lie. It would give people a signal that I actually am physically capable, which I'm not, right? I'm just, I can't fix anything, right? Like literally, that is not computer related. On the computer computer side, I can fix almost anything, right? Like, but on the computer, uh, on in any physical thing, I just don't feel like I deserve to wear that Carhartt jacket. Am I right in that? And then if I'm wrong, should Dungeons & Dragons then and Dungeons & Dragons not players move past, uh, buy Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, even though they don't really deserve to be in that, uh, even though they feel subconsciously or consciously that they don't deserve that game? Right, that they don't deserve to own it and put it into their collection because their desire for comfort outweighs their willingness to display courage. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.